Hello and welcome to the last When You're Alone with God devotional video. And there are only five devotions left, so this will probably be a, sh a shorter video than normal. And there's the first two devotions come under the name Hope, and the last three in the book come under the name Alpha and Omega. And the first devotion is called The Different Grief, and it covers 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. We do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, so that you will not grieve as do the rest of who have no hope. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13. Losing a loved one can make us feel as if we have lost a part of ourselves. Death prompts grief that may seem overwhelming, yet some Christians teach that it is inappropriate to express grief, as if this indicates a lack of trust in God. In the Thessalonian church, some taught that believers who had died would miss the return of Christ. In his letter, the Apostle Paul corrected this, mis this misinformation by explaining the order of events when all Christians living and dead will go to be with the Lord. Paul did not say, we don't grieve. He said, we do not grieve like unbelievers. Of course, we grieve the loss of those from whom death has separated us. Yet hopelessness must not corrupt our grief. For Christians, death is not the end. When God summons his children home, it is the beginning of life un unfettered by sin, disease, and pain. It is ultimate and permanent healing. Jesus Christ is the hope of glory, infusing us with his hope in our grief. Heavenly Father, thank you for the comfort that comes from the hope you impart. Have I been grieving as the world grieves, and in what ways does the hope of Christ comfort me as I grieve the loss of a loved one? The next devotion is called A Hopeful Explanation, and it covers 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8-16. to 16. Always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you, to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. I want what he has. These words often reflect envy and dissatisfaction with our own circumstances. We fall prey to desiring possessions, experiences, or relationships we don't have. Yet when it comes to our relationship with the Lord, we should want others to desire what we have. We want them to be dissatisfied with an empty life of continuous striving and failing. We want to live in a way that creates a hunger and a thirst for an intimate relationship with the living God. When we love our enemies in a world governed by vengeance, Others will be curious when we live with integrity in a culture of moral relativism, they will notice. When we ex exude hope in a hopeless world, people will yearn for what we have. When they ask, we must be ready to explain both the reason for our hope and how they can have it too. We cannot share the answer until we, we live in a way that causes others to ask the question. Lord God, help me live in a way that causes people to ask the reason for the hope I have. In what practical ways can I live out my hope today, and am I prepared to explain the reason for my hope if I am asked? And the th third devotion is called Looking for Meaning, and it covers Isaiah chapter 44, verses 1 through 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Revelation 21, verse 6 in the New Living Translation. Every good story has a curious beginning that piques our interest. 
a solid middle to hold us in the storyline and a strong, satisfying finish that makes us glad we stayed with it to the end. Life is like a good story. We start with an exciting beginning filled with potential twists and turns accompany decisions made throughout our lives, though we don't know when our end will come. We know it certainly will arrive. Still many throughout history have wondered if our beginning, beginnings and endings really mean anything in the grand scheme of life. We cannot find meaning in our beginnings and endings apart from the Alpha and the Omega. He is not a beginning or an end. He is the beginning and the end, the only one. Prior to cre creation, before the first word was spoken, God was. Long after all we know that is real ceases to exist, God will still be nothing his life, substance, or meaning apart from him. Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. Letters have to be in the right combination to form words. Similarly, when we are in a right relationship with the one and only Alpha and Omega, he infuses our lives with meaning. Alpha and Omega, thank you for filling my life with meaning and purpose. How does knowing God as the Alpha and Omega give my life meaning today? In the second to last devotion in this um, devotional book is called completion and it covers Philippians chapter 1 verses 3 to 11 I'm convinced that God who began this good work in you will carry it through the to completion on the day of Christ Jesus Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 do you have an unfinished project in your closet or garage you begin, began it with the best of intentions, but never got around to completing it. Maybe you ran out of time, became bored, or the endeavor was more difficult than you anticipated. When we enter into a restored relationship with our Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ, we come to Him unfinished. Like a diamond in the rough, we need cutting and polishing to sparkle, God does not leave us unfinished because of the amount of effort we need. He is never surprised at our degree of sinfulness or our lack of cooperation. The moment was surrender the moment we surrender our lives to him, God begins his work in us. His Holy Spirit chips, cuts, and sands us day by day. He brings just the right pressure to bear until we think we will break. We expect damage or scarring, but we discover he knows exactly what he is doing. When we go, when we go to be with Christ for eternity, we will find his work in us complete. He will have transformed us from unfinished projects to shimmering jewels. Father, thank you for the assurance that your spirit is working to make me complete. Where is the Alpha and Omega exerting pressure in my life as he works in me today? And the final devotion in this One Year Alone with God devotional book is called Intervention, and it covers Isaiah chapter 46, verses 5 to 13. I am God, and there is no one like me, declaring the end from the beginning. And that's Isaiah chapter 46, verses 9 to 10. Deism is a philosophy that came to prominence in the 18th century. Deists believed God created the universe and left it to function according to natural law. They do not believe God miraculously intervenes in our world, and they reject the divinity of Jesus Christ. Yet the Bible is filled with descriptions of God's intervention in his creation. 
He covered Adam and Eve's sin and delivered Israel from Egyptian slavery. He warned his people of his dis, dis He warned his people of his disciplining them through prophesied captivity and then planned their restoration to their land through the Persian king Cyrus his bird of prey from the east Isaiah 46 verse, verse 11 he sent his son fully human and fully divine to pay the penalty of man's sin and he will return to judge the world as we share our faith we will meet people with different ideas as to who God is. Their belief or lack of belief does not change the truth that there is no one like our God. Declaring the end from the beginning. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, always accom accomplishing his pleasure and always at work for our, for our ultimate good and his perfect glory. Holy Lord, thank you that you are everything and anything I will ever need from the beginning of my relationship with you until the final day when you bring me home. What can I do today to show a watching world that the Alpha and Omega is my God? Well, that, that's all the one year alone with God devotions. Um, before I um, close out this video. I'm gonna go over the my responses to the questions of, to each devotion and some closing thoughts. And for the first devotion, I had written: When friends and family have bad things happening, also the fact that this is a fallen world because of Adam and Eve's original sin of eating from the tree of good and evil. And then the next devotion I wrote, by living a life based on God's approval, not the world's approval. And the second question, yes. For the next devotion I wrote, that salvation isn't lost, you can never lose your salvation. And then the next devotion after that, to be an honest person, stop, stop and stop odd behaviors see personal struggles video for scriptures related to my struggles the only sinless man the only sinless man is jesus he conquered death through the cross and his resurrection in the last devotion in the book in the one year alone book i wrote three c's calm cool and collected Maintain a calm attitude to avoid scaring others. Uh, now for some closing thoughts. Thanks for bearing with me for this longer than one year series. Your identity is found in God, not through the opinions of others. And these are some future series plans go, going forward now that One Year Alone with God's videos are over. Expand CR videos to three times a week starting next week. After the CR series, Bible book reading videos three times a week. And Over the Edge Youth devotional series starting early next year, maybe February or March. And I'm a saying that's so important when it comes to to faith faith over fear choose faith in God over living in a mindset of fear well that I appreciate um, you bearing with me for the one year alone with God devotional series that took longer than I thought but I'm happy that it, we it finally got completed and I um, hope you found these devotionals encouraging and all future devotionals I hope you'll find those encouraging and um, with that 
Have a great day and may God bless you.